Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Today I'm playing around with the latest version of Studio One. I usually master my music in Studio One. I don't do as much mixing in Studio One as I do in Pro Tools, but since I show everything in Pro Tools on my channel, I figured I would show some of my core mixing concepts in another DAW to show you that it's not the DAW that you use. Use whatever one you're comfortable with, but it's the concepts behind it. And specifically, I want to show you the power of top-down mixing. This is something that many engineers do. I've been doing it for years because it makes sense for me. It makes mixing faster. I use fewer plugins in the end. My mixes sound more natural. And I have more fun mixing. Yes, it makes me more confident, and confident mixers mix better. What is top-down mixing? It's simple. When you've got your mix pulled up here, I've got this song pulled up here. This is a collaboration I'm working on with uh, my good buddy and the talented Grammy-nominated Ill Factor. Uh, when I've got a track and I'm balancing them, you know, I just kind of get the faders where I want them and the, the song is coming together. I have no plugins on the individual tracks. Uh, I just want to start with the faders, get a balance. Then I start to put plugins on the master fader or the main output or the mix bus. If you imagine that the uh, master fader, your main output, is the top layer, and I were to put a plugin on the master fader, it would trip, trickle down, down to the individual layers, the drum group, if you had one, and then the individual drum tracks, the kick, the snare, et cetera, at the very bottom layer. Whatever you pour into the top, it mixes down, it trickles down to the bottom, top to bottom, top down. So I start at the top layer. All the songs have to flow up through this master fader. So any EQ I put on the mix bus or master fader will affect everything, for better or for worse. Any compressor that I put on the master fader will affect every single track in the mix, for better or for worse. And that's the idea. So let me show you what this can do. I'm going to press play on this mix, and you can hear it natural. And then I'm going to turn on, I've got about four plugins. They look like three, but there's a couple mixed inside of one. Four plugins happening. You'll hear the difference they make. And then I'll show you what we're doing here inside of Studio One. I'll strive with you till the day breaks. I need to know how it feels. I'm thinking freedom. Right, so when they're all in, it's more exciting, it's more open, it's wider, it's more in your face, it sounds more mixed. And it's just four little plugins on my main output here in Studio One, nothing on the individual tracks, okay? We haven't gotten that far yet. This is what I love to do. A little bit here goes a long way and gets the heavy lifting happening. So let's take a listen to what's going on. I'll turn them all off, and I'll open up the first one here which is the fat channel. Now the fat channel is really a few different plugins in one. You've got a high pass filter and a gate, you've got a compressor, an EQ, and a limiter. And so again, I'm just using the stock stuff here in Studio One. Over here in my effects browser, I've just dragged in a few different things. And what I wanted to do is start with uh, an EQ. So let me turn off the compressor first. If you look closely, I'm doing three little EQ moves. I've got a cut here at around 389 hertz. I've taken about 2 dB out. Okay, that kind of cleaned up some woofiness, some boxiness in the mix. I've got a little teeny, less than a dB boost here at 2.5K to bring out some of the clarity and aggression in the guitars and the vocals. And then I've got a 2 dB shelf boost at 7.8K. This is opening up the top end frequencies. So let me press play here in the hook um, where everything's in, and I'm going to turn on the EQ. Very subtle. Keep that word in mind, subtle. You're not going to hear much of a difference. So it's just a little more clear. Then I've got the compressor set up here. And what I'm looking for is a slower attack. Um, really, you know, no faster than 10 milliseconds. That's kind of as fast as I want to get. Uh, really fast release. Okay. Two to one ratio. 
And I'm just looking for a little bit of game reduction on the big hits, like the kick and the snare hits, so, or the clap. So let me back up here and turn this on. So you see, it was kind of like 3 dB of gain reduction on the loudest hits on the kicks. Let me turn the compressor on and off and you'll see what it's doing. Again, this is gonna be subtle. It's gonna tuck in those loud peaks like the kick and then bring everything back up a little bit. I have like 0.7 dB of makeup gain to make up any level I'm losing, which should bring out the energy of the stuff that's not quite as loud. It should bring up the average volume just a smidge, which brings up a little bit of energy without, and then I'll turn it on. Away from the sun. More energy pumps a little bit more, which is cool. So those two happen to be in one plugin. Um, so the EQ and compression go together there. I followed that up with um, multiband compression. So multiband compression can be your best friend or your worst enemy. What it is is a very smart idea where you have compressors keyed to different frequency bands. So if you only want the low end to get turned down when it hits, you can have that. Or if you only want the top end to get turned down or compressed when it's super aggressive, you could do that. Um, in this case, what I'm doing is a little bit of compression on the mid bands, okay? The low mid, the mid, and the high mid. And what I, what this is going to do is sort of just rein in the, the mid range um, from 3, you know, where is this? 320 all the way up to 4K. It's going to rein them in a little bit um, and allow them to sort of not get out of control so it gets tucked down a little bit. Let's take a look at what these are doing. Right, I'm just trying to sort of kiss them a little bit. So the threshold is just set with a little light compression, two to one ratio, um, just to sort of keep the mid range in check so it doesn't it gets a little bit more reined in, and then there's a little bit of makeup gain on the whole compressor to bring up any level that's lost, which what that does is actually brings out the excitement of the low end, which is not being compressed, and the top end, which is not being compressed. Pretty interesting. So this is a little trick I stole from Greg Wells, um, where you sort of compress the mid ranges with the multiband compressor, and then it brings out sort of the excitement in the top and bottom ranges. And so a little bit of multiband is going a long way. Let's back up to the hook and we'll turn it on and off. Subtle, but a little more exciting, right? So again, I'm adding little subtle excitement to the track. Third and final one is binaural pan. And this is just a stereo widening plugin. Um, it's, I mean, that's probably not all it is, but in essence, that's how we use it. You can increase or decrease the width of your stereo feed. And in this case, I'm doing it on the whole mix. So you could start with the width at 100%, which is just the way your mix comes, and you can widen it up. So take a listen to what this does. It's gonna just play with the edges and mess with your mind a little bit and make the mix sound like it's coming from wider than your speakers or headphones. Increases the edges, increases the apparent width. It might mess with your balance a little bit, so you might want to adjust um, whatever's on the far edges, like those background vocals. When I go to actually finish this mix, I'm probably going to tone them down in the high frequencies because they're a little too in my face. But it's going to, again, create more width, open up the mix, um, which can be really nice. And typically, I only do this if I'm referencing another mix that I'm listening to, a professional song that I'm trying to get my mix to compete with. If I notice that that song sounds wider and I like the stereo width and the stereo field of that professional reference, and a mine is a little too narrow, and I want to compete with it, I'll grab this plugin and widen up the mix a little bit. Wider isn't necessarily better. 
okay? Just listen to some of the greatest Red Hot Chili Pepper tracks. You know, the whole Californication record, super mono sounding, right? Everything's kind of up the middle and it rocks hard. Um, so why it isn't always better, but sometimes having something like binaural pan is really cool. So three things, or four things really, right? You got the fat channel, which I'll pull down here, which has got compression and EQ. We've got the multiband compressor and doing the mid-ranges. And then we've got binaural pan, which is widening up the whole mix. And what I'm going to do is uh, right here, I'm going to hit the inserts button, and it's going to turn all four plugins off in one fell swoop, and uh, we can hear what it's doing. Right, huge difference. Obviously, it's a little louder, so that you know, don't let loudness fool you. But what we're doing is increasing the edges, and we're increasing the um, overall average loudness by reducing dynamic dynamic range a little bit. Um, again, the kick and the snare kind of live somewhere in the same peak volume, but it's like bringing out the rest of the mix and making it sound more mixed at the beginning. And now it's time to go down and work on the vocal and, and work on the kick drum and work on the snare and work on the bass and do the EQ and compression and any kind of saturation you want to do. But look how much we've done with four little moves because each one individually weren't that drastic. Maybe the most drastic was the binaural pan because it's easiest to hear it getting wider, especially in headphones. But they're all kind of not super satisfying by themselves. They're a little bit subtle, but when added together on your master fader or your mix bus, you get a huge boost. Now, when you go to mix on the individual channels, you're mixing through these plugins, so your vocal might already be more forward and more compressed because of these plugins, and you may not need as much on the vocal. And that's great. That allows you to have a more natural sounding mix and allows you to mix faster, use fewer plugins, which frees up CPU power so you get more mileage out of your system. So this is top-down mixing in a nutshell. Start at the top layer, on your master fader and move on down. Now I wanna give you something before you go. As you're diving into production and trying to make your mixes sound really, really good, I want you to get good at mixing, yes, but I also want you to get good at the entire production process. Mixing is actually just one of six steps that are critical to getting a song sound, what I call radio ready, right? Spotify ready, whatever you wanna call it. It's, it's a process that every one of the songs that you love has gone through from beginning to end. So when you're sitting down to make music, you need to have a map. Otherwise, you're shortchanging yourself. You're not gonna get your song to sound as good as possible. And little tricks like this are important, but the whole process, having a whole step-by-step -step framework for making music is what's gonna separate you from the amateurs. So what I've done is reverse engineered every major song you've ever heard from step one to step six. When you make a song, this is what you need to do. Follow every single step, and I've mapped it out for you in my six steps to a radio-ready song guide, and I want to give it to you for free. It's an easy PDF download. I think it's about 17 pages. You can read it pretty quickly, but the idea is that you reference it, you look at it, you print it out, or keep it on your phone or tablet or wherever. When you're making music, go through it step-by-step step every time you got a song that you want to work on and release to the world, and it'll help you get the best-sounding song possible. It's absolutely free. Just grab your copy at RadioReadyGuide.com. Put the link here in the description and on the screen. RadioReadyGuide.com is my gift to you for watching these videos. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. I'll see you on another video real soon.